Hey everybody, Jesse with Survival Summit. Today I wanted to show you guys kind of some specialty items. Now, if you have a, a good pace plan with alternate and contingency locations, you should have at least some different types of gear and gear that you're duplicating in those locations in case something happens at your primary. Of course, you want to stay at your primary. That's the way you always want it to be. Let's take a look at some stuff that we have in one of our locations. We have a little bit of backup communications up top. We have a Voyager shortwave radio, a couple retrievuses, a couple different backpacks, some armor items. Of course, we have a nice ghillie suit. This one is actually brand new. Now, we also have some of these older Israeli gas masks with some of the filters that they claim are still good, but we'll show you in a minute what we're currently stocking and using. This right here is exactly what it looks like. Riot gear, a couple riot helmets, elbow and knee pads, some gloves, a few extra canteens. Moving down, we have some solar packs. Now, this is from a kit that I've showed you guys before. In this kit, we, we keep everything in Faraday bags as well, as well as EMP bags. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, EMP bags. Those are EMP bags. That's a Faraday bag. A Faraday bag will block all signals. It's basically the same type of material the FBI uses, so you can't get access to certain electronics. Faraday, the EMP bags are basically specifically for an EMP. So we keep GPS, a satellite phone, a couple flashlights, power banks. In another one of those cases are some burner phones. The burner phones are not for communications typically, although if there is an EMP and it doesn't take down the entire grid and the phones do come back, but your current phone got fried, having a backup would be good. What we actually use it for is on this thumb drive, there are thousands and thousands of survival and instructional manuals on here. So we can plug this in, recharge the phones, and get access to a lot of information if we need it. One of my next items, which is really an incredibly good asset to have, we get ours from Duration Health. We are brand ambassador for these guys. You can go to our website and you can check it out. This is emergency antibiotics prescribed by a doctor, legitimate pharmacies. In my kit, I have a ton of different emergency antibiotics. I have EpiPens. You name it, I have it. I have anti-malaria medication in case I find myself in a different country and I might need it. There's a ton of stuff on here. You can do a lot of add-ons. They even have AED machines now. It's pretty crazy. Also over here, I have some other miscellaneous medical gear. Kind of moving on to the next section. This, this is general first aid. There's a, you know, a lot of different types of bandages and band-aids and moleskins and things like that. I have some potassium iodide pills, some radiation detector cards, and of course I have a full trauma kit with tourniquets, combat gauze, decompression needles, chest seals, you name it, it's in there. I basically have everything in that kit. These we're selling on the site now as well. This is These are Mira safety gas masks. These filters will last for 20 years. The old school, five years. This. These are some of the best gas masks and some of the best filters you're going to find for CBRN. And we're really, really happy with them. You can put the new filters also on some of these old masks too, if you'd like. Make sure you test them. Make sure you get fit tested to make sure the respirator fits you the way it's supposed to and it actually works. That's really important. On the bottom, I have a battle belt that I use. Got bag pouches on the back, holster. It's got everything on here, different knives, a flashlight, you name it, it's there. This kit, this is actually my winter bug out bag. It's got everything in the kitchen sink. It's got wool blankets in there. It's got a whoopee in there. First aid, trauma, it's got an axe. This is strictly winter. My summer bag, which is in my vehicle now, much smaller, much lighter. I think it's only a little more than 15 pounds. Here's some other winter supplemental gear that I put in this ice fishing sled in the back of a truck so I can move quickly and not have to carry everything on my back. There's a blizzard transport hypothermia litter with a ready heat blanket, a really, really nice 10x10 10 10 10 Smith flame resistant tarp, 
There's a lot of stuff in here. There's an old John Pack bed sleeve in the back. This is basically specialty gear. Like I said, in the spring, summer, you know, the pack I have in the vehicle is pretty small, very light. I used to take everything out of that pack. That's a Rush 72, a 511 Rush 72. You can fit a lot in there. But I got tired of changing everything in and out. So now I have a few different packs that are for the summer. This is my main winter pack. There's a giant sleeping uh, bag right there that's rated up to like, I think, minus 20. It's pretty awesome. So anyway, this is some of the specialty gear that we keep. We're interested in what you guys keep. And if there is a lot of stuff in here that we don't sell on the website, you know, we don't, smell the, we don't sell the tent smiths, we don't sell the battle belts, we don't sell the ghillie suits, but we do sell the gas masks. We do sell, you know, well, we're brand ambassador for the emergency antibiotics. We do sell a ton of different trauma kits and first aid kits. And basically everything you can pack in a bug out bag, we sell. But, you know, some of the items we don't. We don't sell the riot gear. We don't sell some of the old military packs. We don't sell, you know, the radios and stuff. But you guys can find this stuff in so many different places. I hope you guys liked the video. And if you want us to get into the weeds with any other type of kits, let us know.